so then suddenly Adam Cole's music played and he walked to the ring not looking any heavier or any tanner and he wears jeans so tight that you can tell that his legs look like chicken wings without steroids or growth hormones. I mean, for the chickens. You know where it says cage-free, no steroids, no gro growth hormones? I prefer chickens that die of old age. Well, you're getting a skinny fucking scrawny wing is what you're getting. And he did a heel interview. And he held up the devil's mask and he promised when he was 100% they're going to have to give the devil his due. So they're not going to even let people forget about that fiasco and how well, disappointed they were when it was resolved. Go ahead. I think this was their way of getting past that entire thing. As opposed to ignoring it, it was blowing it off in one thing. And as soon as he pulled out the devil mask, or the devil's mask, I guess, it was pretty obvious what was about to happen. Well, I, 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 and I know that they, they blew it off whether they know it or not at the end of this. I don't trust Tony to know that they did. But they have a blackout, and then a video pops up, which apparently was, I guess, MJF's trophy room in some rented home somewhere because it looked like there was only the things that they'd specifically put in there to show on camera that could show that anyone lived there. And the lights came back on and MJF's music played and he came out and got a big pop. And they chanted MJF and they chanted holy shit. And then when, it, when Adam Cole was quivering and shaking, they chanted at him, you fucked up. And they did the deal where they had the face off and Adam Cole wanted a hug. and. MJF's like, hey, you've got to be kidding me. But then he thinks about it, and then he hugs Adam Cole, and then he kicks him in the balls and gives him a brain buster. And then MJF takes the microphone, and he cuts a little promo over the top of Adam Cole, and he says, somebody gets this, this shit stain out of my ring. He's using our material here. Is that an issue? Is that a trademark issue for you? And no, I'll, I'll let him have it, because this whole show deserves that designation. And then the, the security helped Adam Cole out. So if, if they felt like, just to tie the story up, even though it's been almost six months, that they needed to have MJF drop Adam Cole on his head and have him carried out just to get even okay. But I just wish that they hadn't had to remind anybody of this stuff. Again, MJF's been off TV. We haven't seen Adam Cole on TV in a while either, and he's still healing, and reportedly he's still not cleared, uh, although he did take a bump here, so it really makes you wonder what's going on. But Well, but he, he didn't... He Here's the thing. He took a ball kick, which anybody can take, and he took a brain buster, brain which buster. if it's given right, anybody can take. He didn't have to put any stress on a broken ankle or broken foot. And MJF he is relatively safe from what we... Yes, he wasn't risking any kind of concussion there because it was MJF and he wasn't going to be stupid. But we haven't seen so, him on TV, so they bring him out all of a sudden for this to blow it off. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying, because Cole is obviously nowhere near ready, but they had to bring him back so that MJF could beat him up and drop him on his head and then take the devil mask and... And, you know, drop an elbow on it like Ric Flair. I wish Tony put this level of commitment into detail in any of his other stories. The shit that we want to forget about, it would be better if everybody just moved on past. He'll remind you all day long. But the shit that you might need to remind somebody about, that gets lost for months. Uh, but MJ, he did a great promo, MJF. He had good lines. I don't need a New Japan or a Vince McMahon to make MJF. MJF made MJF. And Adam Cole woke me up. And there's going to be no more ha-ha, no more friendship, kangaroo kicks, and bullshit. Not love, but hate, hate, hate. He was trying to promise a reset, what we've talked about for however long since this happened when they ruined him last year that this 
smiling, happy MJF with the friends couldn't be sustained and it was a mistake and they were going to have to rectify it. And now they've come to that come to Jesus moment. The chickens have come home to roost, whatever the fuck. And he's basically, it was what Jerry Lawler got over as a heel in Memphis the first time so strong when he switched babyface, he was automatically over. But after a year of Lawler being babyface, then the people were like, ah, but now he gets beat and he doesn't cheat as much because you have to be a babyface. So he would start cutting promos. The old king is coming back this Monday night. You're going to see the old Jerry. And he would throw fire at somebody or he would do something heinous like the old Lawler would do, but he'd do it to the heel that deserved it. This is kind of a magnified example of that where MJF has had to reset himself because of the way they tore him down on television. And now he's had a break, and if he gets away from this, and maybe he's gotten his new deal that he can call his own shots, because if Tony gets a hold of him again, you can't do unlimited resets. But this one might work. But, uh, you know, when he said... When he said, it's not my fault that all your favorites compared to me uh, suck a big old bag of donkey dicks, the people chanted donkey dicks. And then finally he said, well, my contract status, and he showed on his leg, on his calf, a new AEW tattoo with, and a poker chip with AEW on it saying, always bet on yourself. But, of course... It is also in a place that will be covered anytime he wears a wrestling boot, so when he goes to the WWE, he doesn't have to worry about it. And he said, I'm not fucking leaving. So he's done this to himself. I don't know. The idea of a reset is a tough... You know, doing a reset is different than coming out and announcing it. You know, actually just coming out there and being... You know, the classic MJF or a new version of MJF is different than saying, all right, enough of everything you've seen for the last year. Now everything is going to go back to the way it used to be. You know, we'll see. They need him. Yeah. More than ever. They need him. And traditionally, he is someone who moves numbers. Pay-per-view buys, TV ratings, even merch when they turned him babyface finally. So everything he does has succeeded for them. To a smaller audience, the audience is not willing to give AEW the benefit of the doubt as much anymore, but they really needed him here. You know, again, the tattoo thing, it's interesting. Who said, bet on yourself? Was that what Triple H said to Cody? Is that what the story is? I didn't even delve that deep in it. I just thought he was telling Tony Khan, hey, look, I got your fucking company name tattooed on my leg. Well, I think that is what it is. And again, you know, what a heel move when he exposes it again in five years and all of a sudden it's a different logo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it'll happen. At least it wasn't on his neck on the bright side. At least he didn't put it on his neck. You see, he's a smart guy. Yeah. But, you know, everyone's happy he's going to be back and everyone's afraid he's going to get sucked into... We used to call it the Jericho Vortex, but now it's just the vortex of Tony's booking. And well, who's he who's he gonna work with to draw any money? Him and Osprey is something I would be very interested in seeing. I don't know if I'm really that into him and Swerve right now. I'm not into Swerve and anyone right now. They killed my enthusiasm for Swerve. <laughs> uh he's a heel again. Him and Moxley done. He is? MJF? Oh, you no, know, I, I thought you meant Swerve. No, MJF's a heel again. So other baby faces, Moxley's kind of a baby well, face. Well, he's, he's, a, he's a heel again that can get the people to chant donkey dicks. So again, he, here's going to be another popular heel. But again, the other problem is, who is the promo for? Again, that's a rabid AEW audience there, and the pay-per-view audience is smaller than the amount of people watching the TV show, just because that's how pay-per-view works. But this is like almost a promo for a smart audience. I'm not going anywhere. You know, the average person just knows he was on that show and he was off that show. Yeah. You know, they don't know anything about any of this stuff. So it, it's another AEW rah-rah speech hidden in the middle of a promo. 
they well, all, it, they're it, always it, looking like they're on the defensive. Even here, where MJF had the Bobby Ewing the last year, where he had to come out and denounce everything. He had to do the Ric Flair beating up his outfit. He started elbow dropping the mask. He was trying very hard to convince people that the shitty way that they saw him presented the last time he was there was a thing of the past. And that's the uh, he knew he was talking to the smartest audience because that's who's going to get the pay-per-view and the most diehard audience. And they're the ones that they probably did the most damage to MJF in front of by the way he was presented. Silly and stupid. We shall see. Yeah, because he's now going to be a heel in a company with Jericho doing his disingenuous heel act. The Bucks doing their disingenuous <laughs> heel act. The House of Black doing their magic act. Look at the other heels in that company and then try to figure out what baby faces he's going to work with. Well, but I mean, Ostrich is still a heel because he's managed in the in the heel group of the top heel manager. He's just popular. Swerve. Still has a manager and was a, a baby violating heel, but they just liked him. So now MJF is going to be one of the heels they like rather than one of the heels they're fucking bored by. They'll probably give us a starter feud. That's what they did after the last time he had to kind of denounce his last year, after the Jericho feud. You're right, it started with yeah, Pillman, Pillman yeah. Jr. and then Darby. Like it kept growing from there. He won't start with an Osprey. He'll have to work to get there, one or two feuds. He'll probably take someone on the roster and try to elevate him first. If I had to guess based on track record, that's what I would guess. Well, boy, you'd need a lot of helium to elevate some of these son of a bitches. Action Andretti. 